Paris predictability as we have. Nobody on the deepest level so will, will be no air spray. That's just one thing. There's tons. They're all the same thing. Way before the incidents happened, strategy deals with the unpredictable. Yet it tries to predict the precise way in which many forces could interact with each other, be distorted by nature and human or environmental circumstances, yet remain predictable. Nobody predicted what the Hezbollah was going to do in 2006. Nobody. We have three CDs. We call it. Bashir or Mubashir. Okay? This is good news. To everybody, it's the worst news. We say, oh, no. Afghanistan, I was looking, and technically I've forgotten. I have to read the old stuff to remember. It's deadly. 2000, that was 2001. Down at the press club. Maybe I'm going to say you made a mistake. Oh, good God. Oh, it's too bad for you, oh boy. But these bunker busters, the Russians are saying, congratulations, they whooped us, but look what you did. Oh my God, it's great. They said, oh no, homeboy, oh don't you, mm -mm, not today. So that was God's trick to give them a flash in the pan. Six months later, they're ready to go into Iraq. Why? Because the history of Iraq. Here's what we were predicting in 1991. Oh, Louis the Lip, or whatever his name, the National Negro was saying, those Muslims love their home and their children. And if you attack them, they're bound by their Quran. Holy Quran. And the Holy Quran says, and they're going to fight. They said, oh, no, 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 no. That's 91. Them boys going to break out and run it. Why did they just fall in Iraq? And the Iraqis, Iraqi has a history of Imam Hussein running out. And come on down. History of uh, over Imam Ali. Come on, we got you covered. Clean duck out, get you killed. That's the reputation of Homestead Adams. But 2003, we said, no, we have, we have a whole thing called, in 2004, another Islamic state. And you know what we said? In Iraq, we're going to get 65% of what we want. But how can they have an Islamic state like Iran? Get you a little counter up and count up what's happening in Iraq. 65%. Exactly. Okay, now, what do you think the white man thinks about that? Oh, Arab Spring? You don't know Arab Spring. What did we tell him? Can you imagine how upset and how humiliated he is? See, all that's on CD. And everybody's pretending like they, I don't remember that, I don't remember that. Right? The Negroes in California, I don't know, I don't know who the Mutar's a good man. Even Musa must have did something wrong. They won't even investigate to see what you say. Now, I didn't tell them we've got to investigate. They don't investigate. They pretend like they don't know. This is the trick. It's not a trick. God got to be on your side. Because you don't control strategy deals with unpredictable, with the unpredictable. Yet it tries to predict the precise way. I'm not saying we were precise. I'm just saying we were 97, 98% accurate. That's all. From a humanistic point of view. Yeah. That accurate. I mean, it sounds like we're lying. 
You know why? I read history all the time. This sound, I know it sounds like, like coming from an African American. I have not read any historical, any religious predictions consistently over a long period of 35 years is accurate at ours. And I say, nah, 95, 96. If we were playing baseball, you know what my batting average would be? About 950. Well, yeah, 960 or something. It could be nine. It could be nine hundred and eighty or something like that. It could be that long. Yeah, sure. I'm talking about from what y'all. Y'all just think about what you've heard. About, oh, what you can go get. You know the record in baseball is like four hundred something. Mm -hmm. One year. One year. In the whole time of baseball, yeah. we're not talking about. Over a period of time, I know 900. One year is 400, and ain't nobody ever broke that record. But I'm asking you, you've been here over 20 years, 25 years. Am I telling the truth about these accuracies and the detail about the stuff that is mind boggling? That his was a trip. They, half of the stuff they showed me, you know what? Because if, if they show you, if, you, if they mess with you and you don't want to cooperate, they say, let me show this nigga what he's up against. When they show anybody what they miss, that's what uh, Hassan Nur Deen said when he was leaving in about 86. He said, you don't know what you're up against just because I'm getting rid of him. You, you don't know what you're up against. The police used to say that. You don't know what you're up against. No, what I would do was invite them. So I had a little scared, just show them. This is what we got, nigga, at each other. So I well, thank you very much. Now I see what I have to overcome. If a caveman is around long enough, he wish he could get over that mountain. Couldn't get over that mountain, it's just too high. Da, 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 da. But his children dreamed getting over that mountain. And they kept dreaming. He said, if I was just a bird, I could fly over that boy. And pretty soon the man had made a bird. You look at airplane, he's got a wing, he's got a tail. So, and now the caveman flies up over that barrier, the rivers, the mountains the oceans, and look down. The white man taught us that in social studies. But he was teaching us about him. He had all these barriers. Wow. The caveman can evolve to cro magnon man, Neanderthal man, what we call Homo erectus, he walk up right. Homo erectus technocratus, that's what we call the white man today. He's homo erectus. He walked straight up. I'm homo erectus. Technocratus. He has technology, but he's Neanderthal in everything else. He hasn't improved one bit. He's still Neanderthal. But he is homo erectus technocratus. He's a white man that walks upright, erect. He don't go around on fours like he used to when we let him out of the cage. He on our cause. But he's still a caveman <clears throat> in everything. In his behavior, he's a brute. He's still carrying that club around. So, so I'm going to try to speed it up. But this is the crux of the matter. We're in a new frontier. We're not old. We can't develop a crew. We got exper we got we're experimenting. We got a few ideas, team concepts, all kind of concepts. We got we got to experiment with what we're doing, just like they experiment with the rockets.
But we're going to use all the accumulated knowledge and skill. So we're going to whip boss man, and if he get out of line, we're going to go Negro on him. And he knows he loses all Negro. He loses all of it because he can't get back that far. He can't get back to 1900. He can't get back there. He can't get back to the humiliation of the nigger field. Picking cotton all day and a white man controlling your family life and everything. They don't know what it's like. They don't know what it's like. Okay. Uh, I know a little bit about how that mean white man is. So I ain't never considered. I don't care what he do. I have considered doing anything else but this. Because of what he did, he did that to me. I just think it's normal, just like right now. All the stuff happened to me runs everybody crazy. I ain't never heard of nobody dealing with that. I have never even heard about nobody five or ten percent on such a regular basis over a long period of time. So I know this is a gift from God. When you get a gift from God, it go also goes along with that gift some responsibility. All of our people have gifts. You use your gifts. You know, like a lot of people run fast, real, they run fast. If you train, you can run even faster. Well, I learned something about running. I didn't run as fast as everybody else, but I was a distant runner. If I run at my pace, a marathon is not hard. I would say that now. <clears throat> But it was not hard up until the 50s. Marathon was not hard because I'm a distance runner. Not as, if I try to keep up with my own boys, the little thin guys, all my running partners was thinner, they could stay was fast. And I would tell them after a while, after we were running together, I said, okay, y'all go ahead. Because if I stay at this pace, I ain't going to make it. That's your pace. Of course, I'd meet them up later on, the 21st mile, 17th mile, usually. And then we'd run along together again. Then, 18 miles, I would pick it up. Because we're getting close to the end. Then I'm like a truck. I got a big body, they got a little body. I carry all those carbide things along. And I'm just emptying out the fuel as I go along, and I still got plenty left. Design our future. This comes from 2000, from October 2000 to the Cyber Coalition. Nearly every society and every group of people has developed or inherited some vision of a perfect or near perfect state of being. In this imaginary land, the sky is the bluest, the waters appear as the air is the freshest. The birds sing with an angelic harmony. It is, it is a social and political oasis in which the human being has overcome his base nature and developed through strong human will and extraordinary intellect a place where freedom reigns and truth and justice flow down like a heavenly spring. spring. Utopian socialism, that's from the 1820s, holds that in this society, property groups will peacefully and voluntarily relinquish their holdings in order to achieve common ownership of the means of production. We talk about the idea of listening. This is white folks saying this about other white folks. In this utopian socialism, you know utopia was a good place. But way back in Greece, utopia. So people have believed and dreamed about the perfect place since they was in caves. And everybody, everybody's heaven. Environment. Where is heaven for the Indians? Happy hunting ground. Happy hunting ground. Where is heaven for the Arabs? 
they're going to be in heaven when we run in the water, run in that condition. Is out in the desert? What about niggas? I got shoes, you got shoes, all of got children got shoes. Gonna put on shoes, gonna walk all over God's heaven. They're not gonna work them. They're gonna get shoes. Why? Because a slave they have shoes. And they're just gonna walk all over God's heaven. That's heaven. You don't have to work. Heaven, in many cases, is environmental. We said in the early days, heaven, the hereafter was here after the white man was going to be here. Head shot after head shot was there. But we kill all the white people, we're going to be back. Utopian socialism holds that in this society, look at this though, property people will peacefully, the 1%, going to give up their wealth and share it with everybody. Those were good white folks, Paul, but they missed the mark. Tell the truth. They, 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 they misjudged their people. But that's utopian socialism. Yeah, in reality, though. Even modern socialism, Marx, each according to his work, each according to his need. Right? Then in true communism, there's a process called the withering away of the state. You know what that means? That as people work in this great communist, socialist, communism, togetherness, people will get so elevated that the state will wither away. You won't need the government chief. The That's a part of the belief. Well, they don't never get close to that. The communist boy, the willing way of the state, the firming up of the state, boy, good God Almighty. Okay, I'm gonna try to speed up. This is important because remember, we this is new, this is new frontier. We're in it now. We're headed to we're psychologically in the new frontier. What we did up until the day is to show everybody and to teach everybody what's possible. That's why we made the exact moves that we made. When they would do something to us, we would, we're going to do this to you, we're going to do that. Then when they make their move, we say goodbye, I'm going to D.C. I'll come here. Even if they move their mouth wrong, I said, goodbye. You want to open? You don't even tie me to open. You're a fool, if you think. Just like somebody trying to tie you to here. They was trying to, oh, we're going to come to D.C. and we're going to put you. He was telling me, I don't know, I said, you mean say? Maybe he thought I was scared of him. I don't know what they was thinking, but they was doing exactly what I was. See, all the people have seen that. All the people here have heard it. Now, all the things that they were afraid of, oh, that don't never happen. All of it has happened to me 15 times over personally with no help from them. And here we are, happy, healthy, a good example of possibilities. You don't have to be afraid of that white man. And we put out enough that we talked to the white man or his flunkies, the FBI. We talked to the FBI just like we talked to the police out there, you know. And you remember that yourself. They don't come around the they don't know that's where I mean, who are you talking to? I slap the urine out of you. Of course I'm not gonna get no police because it's uh, five years I already did that and I didn't do it again. Not for a punch, you know what I mean? punch a white man one time and do five years of penitentiary. Utopian socialism holds that the society that's probably people with common ownership. James Hilton's novel, Lost Horizon. Anybody ever see Lost Horizon? Ronald Coleman? Made in 1937. It's about Shangri-La. The guy's a big diplomat 
and he's in China somewhere, and they hijack him and take him to the Himalayas, and actually they take him to Shangri-La. And uh, of course he falls in love and all that stuff. Then he leaves, and then they're talking about him in the great colonial clubs of Europe. And it ends with, when he gets back to Shangri-La, you know, to the Himalayas, right up there around, around what's the big Everest? He says, every man is searching for his Shangri-La. That's a good story. I like it. In fact, I may order it look at it again. Uh, classic. Uh, the Wizard of Oz. There was a song that was sang called Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Blue skies, a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. I know this stuff sounds like uh, a little adultish. This is dreamland stuff. We just finished Dreamland stuff. And before that, there was Dreamland stuff. And before that, there was Negro Dreamland. Do you know how it felt becoming a big Negro in those days? That was wonderful. It was wonderful. From a cotton fields to meat line brohams with telephones with 11 channels in 1969 and 70. Good God Almighty. Full tie, sunroofs, elephant hat. That's what the white man's probably lying. You know, yeah, you had your top boots in the back of them. And bars and all. The white man, I believe he was lying. He said, What do you want your this back cover to be? He said, We got this and we got I wasn't gonna use leverage stuff that looks like a clown. So I said, I take the elephant hide. I believe that it was pressed something. This white flea had rolled up in the back and put it on my car. And uh, all the niggas loved it. They just wooey. You know, like the bright colored cloths for the ladies and stuff. That's okay. Niggas got a right to like what they like. I don't like what white folks like. If I like bright colored cloths, and that's, that's what I like. I'm not trying to be white. So, but it was a dream fulfilled. If you don't think this is dreamland, you, you're missing the point. This is dreamland. When that police said, hey man, we'll say you a, you a punk. And I'll say you a bitch. You ain't nothing but a bitch, a stupid bitch. But then the other old Iraqi veteran man with his hair shot, who cut he would, if he wasn't, if he wasn't ordered, he blew, he blew me away with no question asked. You could tell that's what he, he wanted to do, but he couldn't because the white folks told him, go over there and mess with him. Don't get into nothing, and I knew that, so I just took advantage of it. Then they came back the next day, yeah, we come back to fight today, they gave you on top. And I said, hey, see you guys later, just like we're talking. No rematches here, buddy. No if I win the first round, I quit. <clears throat> if I'm gambling and win all this, I don't want eighty percent of the money. You think I'm gonna stay around just to get that last few dollars? <laughs> so well, y'all, I gotta go now. Man, you gotta give us a chance. I don't have to give a chance for nothing. I got eighty percent of the money. You think I'm gonna risk? 80% of my money to get that other two, three thousand, two, four, five dollars? No siree. I'm gone. So every time something happens with them, you lay on them, you color on them. They don't have no idea. And then you jump up, there you are. I expected you, I know you expected me because the white man down there, when they was Mr. Marshall, was messing with somebody, did a woof ticket, woof, woof, woof. I don't know, you might remember that. Remember when the police was down, it was right by my driveway. Right. And the marshal was... Yeah, I remember who came outside, yeah. Yeah, it was like, it was, it was, white white it was almost like, 
You take out woof, woof, woof back with it? No. I catch the other sucker. Later. You fight when you get ready. I don't have no difference. Oh, you done threw a pie in my face? Okay. I don't feel like fighting today. I'm not going to fight today. Well, I'm out of little shape. I can stay. See, once you've been through this, you cannot be humiliated. You can't be um, humiliated. If you get humiliated by beat the police now on other days, right the old way, when it was on 6th, 6th, uh, whatever, 6th District, 6th District, Shoot, they had the brother handcuffed behind and drug me up the stairs. Now you can imagine when they're holding the handcuffs and dragging you up the stairs. And I was a little weightier than I. I ain't skinny now, but I was weightier. But I was lifting iron. If I hadn't been lifting iron, I could have feel the muscle just almost ready to rip. Drag across the floor. Now downtown the same day, they happened to had me in the belt this time, you know, you got the belt and the handcuffs to the so at that time they uh well, no, the belt was in the back. They kind of jumped on the brother, you know, like up on your head, you down on the concrete floor, and the little white boy was just like, oh, oh my. I didn't fought the goon squad all my life since I was a kid. The little butt whooping ain't nothing to me, huh? See you later, I'll get you later. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, boss man. Don't worry about it. This is what the people got to remember. You do everything when you get ready. If the people laugh at you, that is the best motivator to get everybody to call you all laughing at your brother. Oh, you think I'm going broke. Is that it? That guarantees you can't go broke. Because people laugh at you. It's possible for other people, but it ain't possible for me. Oh, you laugh and think I'm going to be broke with no money. No, they said that. Pakistan said, we'll eat grass. Since India got an atomic bomb, we'll eat grass and in order to get ours. The same way we feel about our stuff. We'll eat grass before we satisfy you. You all know that. None of that can happen. Dr. Millions. Constance, the story. Okay. Audacity. Here's what the Heaven ID says. If anyone travels on the road in search of knowledge, Allah will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. The angels will lower their wings in their great pleasure with one who seeks knowledge. The inhabitants of the heavens and the earth and even the fish in the deep waters will ask forgiveness for a learned man. Right, this hadith we realized a long time ago. That means not only the animals, our job is not only with the human, but the fish. You ever see these things, the fish roll up? Now, there's a bird yesterday in California, thousands of them just wash up seabirds. Because there ain't no food for them to eat that time. Fish, whales just rolling up on the water. They did ain't nothing. Something's wrong. So if me and you get our stuff right, they're going to say, boy, this water is fresh and clean. There must be a nigga up there doing that. Because the white man. He was running things. Our great fish people back in the old time told us that that white man looking over the boat, when he was looking over the boat, it was bad. Now they got a nigga out there. So the fish don't make do of Old great being, thanks for that nigga up there in that boat. Yeah, what the idea is. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, and the dwellers of heaven, and the earth, and even the ant and its hole, and the fish, send blessings upon a creature of good to the people. That's terminated. Now we got it. Abu Dawood. Well, if you can, you can take legal stuff out of Abu Dawood, especially. Terminated is the third Bukhari Muslim. Abu 
2004. So our job is not only the physical world that we deal with, but the animal world. Stewardship is what the Bible calls it, and over here we call it Khalifa, but we don't have time for that. I'm going to speed up here in a second. This is from January 2012. Thoughts are things. New civilization of peace. You remember the global civilization? No, it was not, but that clear. We've always been in this. this a new civilization of peace. We've been here for technically way over a decade. But you can't outrun the people too much or they won't know what you're talking about. They'll begin to think, oh, they shooting all the niggas down and he's in a new dispensation. Let me read what it sounds like, then you'll see why we gotta take our time. Imagine yourself consciously participating in humanity's evolution. Imagine ourselves participating. You gotta remember, we're already doing it. That's why the Americans, there's no reason, if we wouldn't, we wouldn't be getting this attention. If they weren't paying attention, remember we did a thing with Dr. Kaleem Siddiqui on the third time, they took everything off, right? They took it all off. Global creative and global civilization of Islam. Imagine yourself consciously, consciously participating in humanity's evolution. Remember, we stick with, we don't use revolution nowhere as much as we did in the past. Why? Because the farther we go back in the past, the farther we go back to revolution. And we realize at a certain time in our heart that revolutions are a thing of the past. Outdated. Outdated. Evidently, I mean, nobody is against them, but they don't use the word you read about revolution. The Russian revolution or the Chinese revolution. Or the Khmer Rouge. I saw this thing uh, last night about the Khmer Rouge. First, they killed my father. It was in the paper, and it turned out to be all right. It was about, y'all remember Pol Pot now and Nord MC in, in Cambodia? The killing fields? Pol Pot regime. Pol Pot regime. Boy, Pol Pot, they called him right. Pol Pot, that boy, he was a uh, tadpole boy. Crack pot. Yes. No longer, now I'll start all over again. Imagine yourself consciously participating in humanity's evolution. Imagine ourselves right here. You and I, we're participating in the evolutionary process. No longer a witness.